Good morning, world. Peace, love, and begonas. Want to do a quick video for you today on the genetic strike bearded dragon. Okay, so recently we hatched out a clutch of zeros, which I'm super happy with. And zeros is basically a recessive pattern on his colorless morph. But the really cool thing about this pairing was the dad was actually an import hypo GS or genetic strike. Imported them from overseas from Marcus Metz. And what that means is a lot of the non visual or non zero offspring were actually genetic strike bearded dragons. And I have those babies with me here today to show you all and give you some examples of genetic strike hatching. Super satisfied with this clutch. And these weren't all the GSs that hatched from the clutch, but just a few of them. Like I said, I just wanted to give you guys an example of the genetic stripe. Super straight stripes. Stripes that go away from the top of the head to the base of the tail and through the tail. One of my favorites being this one right here. Look how refined that stripe is. Beautiful stripe. And that's actually a leatherback. Mom was a leatherback. So... The first question is, what is a genetic stripe bearded dragon? Genetic stripe is a dominant morph, and basically what that means is only one parent has to possess the gene in order to produce visual offspring. Statistically, about 50% of the offspring should carry or display the gene. Okay? Now, what the GS mutation does is, is it causes a very straight stripe from the top of the head to the base of the tail. Here's a great example for you. This big fella is Zeus. He is a hypo leatherback GS dunner. And GS again stands for genetic stripe. See how the stripe goes from the top of the head to the base of the tail? Beautiful stripe on this guy. Very refined, very precise, very clean. And it's crazy because this is a GS dunner. And you know dunner is known to have that sporadic patterning. But one thing about the GS gene that I've noticed is it really cleans up a dragon's pattern, which you've seen with the hatchlings, okay? Another good example we have of GS, or genetic stripe, is this guy right here. This is King Bowser. King Bowser is a hypotrans, or hypotranslucent, genetic stripe dunner. Hypotrans GS dunner. And one of the cool things about Bowser stripe is it's actually a colored stripe. So he's a citrus bearded dragon, but he has a red stripe. And Bowser actually has babies hatching soon. Now that I mention it, Zeus actually has babies hatching today, which I brought up here with me as well, and I'll show you guys at the end of the video. Oh, super excited about Zeus's babies. As you can see, all these guys are ready to breed right now. This is that time of year. Everyone's ready to put it down. So uh, no one wants to sit down and be still. But whatever the case, <clears throat> uh, usually what happens is one of the things that makes Bowser's stripe so cool is because it's colored, and it actually allows you to be able to see it a lot better as it becomes an adult. Okay? A lot of times what happens with the genetic stripe bearded dragons is it starts off very pronounced when they're younger or smaller. And as they get older, the stripe kind of fades out, especially if the stripe is generally the same color as the dragon itself. A good example of that will be this guy right here. This is a hypo citrus GS. And I know you're like, where's the stripe? I promise you, when this guy was younger, he had one of the most pronounced stripes of the genetic stripes we have here. But like I said, when the stripe is the same color as a dragon, it generally fades out. Okay? Now, a lot of people tend to mix up genetic stripe bearded dragons with visual stripe bearded dragons, or GS with VS, okay? Common mistake. Now, what is a visual stripe bearded dragon or VS bearded dragon? A VS bearded dragon has the same type of stripe in the sense that the stripe starts at the head and goes to the base of the tail. But a lot of times with VSs or visual stripes, like this one right here, this is a translucent visual stripe het zero het hypo uh, from our red line. And uh, a lot of times with visual stripes, the pattern will break up as it gets to the base of the tail. Like there'll be gaps in it. Not so much the case in this on this dragon, but in a lot of visual stripe dragons I see. And also, if you notice, the stripe isn't as refined. Whereas if you compare it to somebody like Zeus, as you can see, that stripe's very definite. 
And another key indicator, like I said, from GS to VS is that the GS doesn't have any breaks in the stripe on the way to the base of the tail. Um, you know, I see a lot of guys market GSs or market VSs as GSs, not knowing the difference. The biggest difference, though, when it comes to GS and VS is the fact that GS, or genetic stripe, is actually a dominant mutation, meaning a genetic mutation. So when you breed a GS or genetic stripe bearded dragon to a non-GS bearded dragon, statistically about 50% of your offspring should be genetic stripe. Now, the VS, on the other hand, and here's another good example of VS, this right here is Godzilla. He's from our, our green project. He's a translucent VS or visual stripe. But with the VS or the visual stripe, it's a line bred morph. So what that means is this pretty much comes from selective breeding. It's a lot like a color phase, like red, yellow, or red, or citrus, or whites. Meaning, you know, some stripes can be more pronounced or less pronounced than others, depending upon the lineage. But it's really all about selective breeding when it comes to line bred morphs. Another thing about that is when breeding this VS or visual stripe to a non-VS, there's really no kind of base as far as what to expect as far as how many babies should have the stripe. For example, I've bred visual stripe males to non-visual stripe females or females with no kind of striping and had clutches of 24 and 30 and two or three babies come out with stripes. Of course, I keep those babies and breed them back again to try to get more stripes. But the point of the story is, like I said, with the GS, it's a genetic mutation, a dominant mutation that will, like I said, produce roughly about 50% of the offspring you know, to be genetic stripes, whereas the VS, or visual stripe, is a line bred morph produced from selective breeding, and there is no real statistic as to how many should have the stripe. You know what I mean? It could be a lot, it could be a little, but generally speaking, it's a lot less than what you get when you're breeding a GS. Now, something that I like to do to strengthen lines is I like to take a GS, or genetic stripe, and cross it to a VS. And what you get there is, you know, a lot of genetic stripes of course, like, like I said, the same ratio, but even the ones that aren't GSs seem to have some kind of striping going on. And it just makes a more refined stripe. But that's just a personal preference and opinion of mine. Okay? So, once again, what is a GS or genetic stripe bearded dragon? It's a dragon with a stripe from the top of the head to the base of the tail, sometimes even going through the tail. The stripe is very refined. There are no breaks in the stripe. I mean, there should be no gaps in the stripe. And most importantly, it's a genetic mutation, a dominant mutation or a dominant gene. So when bred to other non-carrying bearded dragons, roughly 50% of the offspring should be genetic stripe. What is a VS or visual stripe? Pretty much the same concept as far as a striping, nice stripe from the base, from the top of the head to the base of the tail, sometimes even through the tail, which we've seen with our lines, which you can see here with Godzilla. Um, but when breeding it to non-striped bearded dragons, there is no, like I said, no, no guarantee as to how many, if any, visual stripes you'll actually produce, okay? So I hope that broke it down for you, but before I let you go, I wanted to show you guys real quick one of the GSs that just hatched today from Zeus here, and this is Zeus. Once again, Zeus is a hypocitrus leatherback GS genetic stripe dunner. Absolutely love this guy. Got him from Hillary, all good at all good dragons. One of my favorite breeders. And uh, this is his offspring. Appears to be Dunner. Uh, I've been looking at the, for the reverse collation on the belly, which we'll talk about a little later in another video, how to identify a Dunner. But uh, it hasn't been out the egg, but for an hour or so. So I really haven't had too much time to play with it and see exactly what we're working with. But I'm pretty sure it's a hypo leatherback GS Dunner. And the beauty about this baby right here is it's 100% head translucent and 100% head whiplet. The mom was actually Poison Ivy, my girlfriend, and uh, she is a hypotrans leatherback whiplet. We produced about two and a half years ago. It might have been three years ago, but whatever the case, was super excited about this pairing. Um, definitely loving the offspring. She gave us some small clutches, but she gave us multiple clutches, so have no complaints. And again, like I said, I hope I was able to break down for you all what a genetic stripe bearded dragon is, what a visual stripe bearded dragon is, what the difference between the two is. If you have any questions, if there was anything you felt like I could have explained better, please feel free to leave me a comment. Hope you guys subscribe. And in the meantime, in between time, peace.
Peace, love, and begonas. Thank you.